All right, welcome everyone, and thanks for joining us here today as we speak about the differences between relative humidity and dew point, and more specifically, how these values relate to ASHRAE 62.1 standard that really focuses on indoor air quality. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Eddie Kelly, and I'm a sensors product specialist here for Belimo in the Americas region. All right, so typically I like to start out with a roadmap as to really where this presentation is gonna go. Um, so first we'll be starting, starting out talking about indoor air quality and what it consists of. Then we'll be jumping right into ASHRAE's update to their 62.1 standard. We'll also be going over a few of the many reasons why humidity control and, and just moisture control in general is extremely important. Um, and we've also included here a, an air handler schematic. It really shows best practice installation to hopefully hopefully help you guys you know all visualize where these humidity sensors specifically will get installed. So then we'll be finishing up with the focus around Belimo solutions to humidity control and really how Belimo solutions help these products or Belimo's products are going to help bring your system up to speed, you know, especially around this new ASHRAE update. Okay, so let's get right into this here. <clears throat> so what exactly is indoor air quality and why is it so important? All right, so generally speaking, indoor air quality really refers to um, the levels of air as it relates to comfort and health. So, you know, with, as you can imagine, a really heavy focus on the health side of things, especially as of lately with everything going on around us. Some of the main categories of indoor air quality are temperature, humidity, airflow, CO2 levels, VOC levels, and the actual size of air part particles all within an occupied space. So again, indoor air quality consists of comfort and health. And all of these categories really do play a crucial role um, when it comes to occupant safety. So you know, if, if, not sure if you know this or not, but every day we breathe in over 3,000 gallons of air. So when you take a step back and look at what we're actually breathing in, it becomes quite obvious that the air quality levels overall are extremely important to our health. So again, as, as most of us know, we're, we're currently surrounded by a global issue that directly impacts human health levels overall. So what we can do is manipulate our indoor air climates for better air quality control, really in an effort to, to push for a mitigation of the health risk of anyone entering our facilities. We want to keep them as safe as possible. So when it, when it comes to the specific decreasing, um, you know, a spread of an airborne pathogen or a virus, you know, in general, humidity, temperature, airspeed, particle size, these are all really, really crucial variables. However, again, for the purpose of today's discussion, we're really going to be focusing primarily on moisture control and the humidity side of things. All right. <clears throat> so for those of you who, who aren't too familiar with ASHRAE, ASHRAE is a global society aimed towards the betterment of overall building health and occupant safety. So a quote pulled directly from the ASHRAE website, um, through research, standards writings, publishing, and continuing education, ASHRAE shapes tomorrow's better built environment today. Okay, so one of ASHRAE's standards that they promote and push out is standard 62.1, which has an immediate focus on ventilation and indoor air quality. So within the standard in section 5.10 specifically, ASHRAE puts out recommendations on how to control moisture levels within your facilities. There's been a recent and significant change to this section where now ASHRAE recommends controlling moisture based on dew point levels, whereas prior to the update, ASHRAE recommended controlling moisture levels based on relative humidity set points. All right. So here's a direct snip pulled from the 62.1 standard explaining that buildings should now limit indoor humidity levels to a maximum dew point of 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So of course there's exceptions to the guidelines, um, you know, especially when it comes to uncooled spaces and, and unoccupied periods, things of that nature. But generally speaking, the new recommendation again is to limit the max dew point within your facility to 60 degrees. So this kind of brings us here um, to, to, you know, what, what are the differences between relative humidity and dew point? And why is dew point now, you know, the new preferred method of controlling, controlling indoor moisture levels? So 
Generally speaking, relative humidity is the amount of water in a given sample of air, which is expressed as a percentage. Dew point, on the other hand, is a temperature where a given sample of air is fully saturated. So basically, it's the temperature where moisture starts to condense and form. So again, dew point is expressed as, is expressed as a temperature versus relative humidity, which is expressed as a percentage. So one another major difference here is that relative humidity changes based on temperature levels, while dew point remains constant. So again, dew point is the temperature where 100% relative humidity occurs. So if we look at this graph on the right here, as temperature increases on the horizontal axis, the relative humidity, the relative humidity value decreases. So if you look at the actual curve itself, you can see that at the 100% relative humidity level, the temperature correlation is 37 degrees. So what that means is that the dew point level is 37 degrees because at 37 degrees, the relative humidity within this sample of air is 100% and fully saturated. All right, so now we're gonna switch gears a little bit and talk about you know, why humidity, why moisture control is important and, and what can happen if it goes astray. So firstly, if moisture levels aren't monitored, you can increase the risk of mold spores and mold growth. And mold can actually be airborne. So when you look at overall building health, especially if you're, if you're circulating air around your system within your building, um, you know, controlling moisture levels, again, is absolutely critical. Bringing this back to the health side of things and, and focusing on occupant safety, mold in general can cause severe illness, both long-term and short-term. So again, as you can imagine, controlling moisture levels, especially when it comes to you know, health levels and our own safety, especially within our facilities, it's absolutely imperative. All right, so further to mold growth, moisture levels can directly impact the way we feel and act. On the dry side, low humidity levels can cause dry eyes and all of the issues that come with dehydration. Actually, so believe it or not, moisture levels in the air actually affect wound healing and the risk of infections, as well as lung-related issues. So again, circling back to, um, to our current COVID situation, viruses and pathogens can actually be spread through water droplets in the air. So, <clears throat> so basically as water particles or water particle size um, within a sample of air changes, the risk of virus transmission also changes. So as the particles basically get smaller, they're able to travel much easier and survive much longer, which really is a big no-no in today's world, especially if one of these COVID viruses or pathogens attaches itself to one of these specific water particles. So again, by controlling moisture levels, we're able to manipulate the size of these water droplets within our indoor airspace. Again, you know, adding to the ultimate goal of increasing occupant safety as much as possible. So <clears throat> a third reason here that we wanna to discuss today on, on why we really wanna control humidity and moisture levels within our facilities is the fact that moisture can also, as, as you can imagine, seriously damage any equipment or electronics. If you're not controlling your humidity and moisture levels, again, you run the risk of developing moisture and condensation, which can be catastrophic and very, very costly when it comes to you know, equipment cost, um, damaged equipment and, and replacing electronics within, within your facilities. So, you know, on, on top of this direct equipment cost or equipment replacement cost, potentially, humidity levels will, will also affect the productivity of the people within the facility. Um, so this can also be, you know, really costly when looking at workload, um, absenteeism, illness, um, you know, things of that nature that might cause people to not, to not actually work as much as they can. Moisture also directly relates to odors and smells. And nobody likes working in a smelly environment. So, so again, all this being said, you know, humidity control and also the, the accuracy of the sensors being used really is a critical component to optimize air quality levels within our facilities. All right, <clears throat> so mentioned before here, I really wanted to include a quick um, air handler schematic that most of us might be familiar with, really highlighting and pointing out where these air quality sensors um, should be installed. So as you can imagine, these sensors should be installed in the ductwork where outside air is being brought in. 
these sensors are going to give us an idea of the quality of air entering the building and the, the humidity levels coming into the building, which of course is absolutely important in, in the air, overall air conditioning process. Um, another crucial location for, for installation is in the supply air duct of any given zone. So this, is, this location is going to provide us um, with direct measurements of the air actually entering the zone that we're focused on. Okay, so, so just like the supply air duct, another extremely important location is installing one of these sensors in the return air duct for a specific zone. The reason for this is because this return air measurement really does give your system a really clear picture of the current air qualities and overall air qualities within that specific zone, whether it be a classroom, office room, conference room, et cetera. So again, this is, a, this is an air handler schematic um, for direct zone and room measurements. There's also wall mounted options that can get installed directly in the rooms or the zones that are, that are looking to get monitored. All right, so this brings us to um, Belimo's offering and, and really how Belimo sensors can help bring your systems up to speed. So firstly, every single Belimo humidity sensor is going to come with a field selectable dew point output. So that being said, we've always provided our humidity sensors with this option. So if you do have a Belimo air quality sensor already installed in your system and you wanna switch to dew point, all you would need to do is change the, dumper, the jumpers on the, the PC board of the sensor itself. We actually have output options for absolute humidity um, as well as enthalpy on the duct mounted humidity sensors. So again, these are all configured through jumpers on the device itself. All of our humidity sensors actually transmit temperature measurements as well, with the temperature output being available in passive or active variations. On the active side, we actually have four field selectable temperature ranges on the device as well, it's really aimed at using the same sensor across various zones. These units are also gonna come with our standard NEMA 4X housing, which has been designed around of installation and wiring. All right, so, um, so as mentioned before again here, we can mount air quality sensors directly on the wall within a specific zone for direct measurements. Here at Belima, we've actually recently, re recently released um, our first stage of room sensors, which includes two units that measure humidity. So just like our duct offering, our room humidity sensors are also able to be switched over to dew point. Using your smartphone, you're actually able to connect to the room sensor through NFC for setup and commissioning. So through NFC, you're actually able to choose which outputs you want, whether it be um, zero to 10 volts, um, two to 10 volts, zero to five volts, and MP bus. So again, all of these humidity sensors will come with a temperature output as well. So through NFC, you're actually, you can actually fully customize your minimum and maximum temperature ranges as well, which again, which really helps um, when it comes to custom scaling and custom applications and, and things of that nature. So again, guys, the major takeaway here over the last couple of slides is that Belimo's, all of Belimo's humidity products, each one of them has the ability to change their outputs to dew point as opposed to relative humidity. All right. <clears throat> so remaining on point with Belimo's products here, I, I really wanted to highlight one of our game-changing solutions. Um, so we have an air quality sensor that's, that communicates through BACnet which of course includes humidity. Um, and this, this sensor actually measures six different parameters within the same device. So this unit has our self-calibrating CO2 module. It has our humidity module that comes with relative humidity, absolute humidity, dew point, and enthalpy. And also of course has a temperature sensing element on board with all, within all the same device. So, so again, through BACnet, you're actually able to watch and monitor all of these parameters in real time. So again, kind of going back overall here, basically with, within this one device, you're able to get six different measuring values all within the same standard NEMA 4X housing. So again, all, all of this being said, this specific device really is ideal for critical applications and facilities where you know, air quality levels are absolutely crucial. Um, and you know, really looking at the environment that we're surrounded with today, anything indoors, any kind of indoor environment is absolutely crucial and critical, especially when you talk about you know, the spread of airborne pathogens and, and things of this nature. 
All right. <clears throat> so on top of the sensors mentioned here today, we, we also offer pressure, flow, and all sorts of other different types of temperature sensors for both duct and pipe, which of course are all backed by our top-notch top -notch service. Um, our top support levels and all of these also include our standard five-year, basically no questions asked warranty. Um, so, so again, all of Belimo's orange housers, orange um, sensor, sensors, will come with a standard NEMA 4X uh, rated housing. Um, these are all UL listed. We have field selectable measurement ranges um, and so on. All of our products have been designed around ease of installation, including a snap-on, snap-off cover and removable spring-loaded terminal blocks, which really makes wiring these sensors up much easier. All right, so hopefully this didn't take too much of your time today. I appreciate you guys for, for jumping in and attending. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Thank you very much.